Good morning, modern steaders. Look how foggy it is this morning. Want some food? You want some breakfast? They're snoozing. Hey, pigs. Chops. Or is that you, pork? Come on out. Come on in. Did your pig sleep good last night? Ready for some feed? Uh, now those are two happy pigs. I love being able to call them out in the morning and see them come running. Uh, it's a beautiful sight. Morning, girls. You know you're all gonna get fed. Willow's second year of being milked. I'll say last year she was pretty much an ornery milker. She didn't like being milked. I hand milked her. It wasn't enjoyable. This year when it was time to milk her again, it was the same. I found the hand milking design on the internet and I decided to try it. And it has made milking Willow a lot more pleasurable, making her a lot better in the milking stand. So I'm glad we made this design. And it's working out really good. Thank you, Willow. I think we still got more food in there. Yeah. Yeah. You're a lot more chill now there, Willow. supposed to stand on the food there. Yeah. You're not supposed to stand on it. Morning, mister. You want to say good morning to YouTube? I milked Willow last night for the first time and we got two cups of milk. So that means we're getting four cups a day or just over. <laughs> That's awesome, guys. That's one quart of milk a day from our goat. <sighs> Something about that just feels good. It's nice being able to sit down eating a lot of the food from your own homestead, but now to have our own milk to go with it, it just tops it right off. Look at that. Morning, CWC. You always know where the food's gonna be, don't you? Yeah, you do. Moose, go eat some grain. Oh, that little dude's got. You better not keep that up. Tanner, this way. Hey, Tanner, come. We're gonna be putting our rafters up, so I'm trying to think about the best flow for that. I think if I use the ladder inside the barn stalls and then just keep moving it, and if I put the roll around stage in on the outside, we can kind of just work the rafter ends on the outside from the stage in. And I think that's gonna be the best, quickest way to do this. We're gonna be using our framing nail gun today with some 16 penny framing nails. I'm gonna pre-drill the rafters.
All right, let's grab screws and the drill. Get that first one set. All right, let's get this one flush on the outside. We got a ledger board to sit it on at first to hold it in place. nail gun and toenail it. Nice. So we got our layouts on the 4x4 post and we also have a layout here on our 2x8 ledger. And I'm keeping a little bit of pressure up off the rafter because this GRK screw wants to suck it down after. There, I like that. We'll work that end after and we do that. We'll probably start in the middle because those posts are pushed out that way. So we'll plumb up the wall and then we can start getting all of them. Set it up in place from down here. It'd be easier. Move our ladder this way. There we go. All right, let's make sure we're flush on the outside edge. Yeah, we're good there. Oh, let's take out the ledger board before we forget. I almost did.
we want our rafters flush on the outside like this one and that one. And in the center, this wall is not plumb, it's kicked out quite a bit. You can see all the rafters set in back off it. So now we gotta plumb up this wall and I'm trying to think if I gotta put like a hook there on the barn wall and then a ratchet strap here to suck it in or if we could just push it and let's see, let's push it in, see how close we can get it. I don't think it'll stay though. Oh, oh, oh that's gonna work guys. I think the pressure of those rafters are hosing down the top plate of the wall. So let's go roughly center. Bring the ladder up, we'll go center and we'll get that first rafter set in place and then we'll work our, we'll work it the other way. That surprisingly impressed me. Let's get up here and see what we have to work with. So if we're like that, like that. That'll work there. That works there. All right, so let's get it pushed in a little bit more. There, that works right there. We're using some six inch long timber locks. And go from the underside. Let's make sure we're on layout first. So I'm gonna go from the underside. Make sure we're on layout. Okay. Oh yeah. All right, let's check this for plumb. I really enjoy using these timber locks and the GRK screws, because if we need to take anything out or fix it, we can. Good right there. Let's check this one. This one's saying it's gonna go in a smidge more. Let's check that. Make sure these are on layout. I checked the wall, it's all nice and plumb, and it's nice and straight going down it. We have a few longer tail rafters, we'll have to cut them back after. We'll run a string and figure out what we need to do. Oh, that works so good. I like it. We have a pocket full of our timber locks. We'll get the timber locks all in, and then after that, we'll go around with the nail gun and toenail it all in place. Now, like I was saying, we got a, some extra long fly rafters. Rafters. Um, I plumbed up the if I kept the top of this four x four plate, even with all the rafters, it had a bow in it. If I level up the four x four posts, this is how it falls. If you look down the post, it's nice and straight, but now some of the rafters are long. I did notice that looking down the side of the barn, once I put that ledger board on, the barn kind of had a little wave to it. So that ledger board, everything being rough sawn lumber, is not always the same dimension. And that's why they plane the lumber nowadays to get it to the same dimension. So by having the tail rafters overhang, that's straightening out that bow, and now we'll correct it later on. Working with wood, whether it's rough sawn or not, you always have to correct issues. One of the sayings is, is a good carpenter knows how to hide his mistakes. I don't even, I wouldn't call them mistakes because it's all in the lumber. A good carpenter knows how to make everything look nice when it's finished. That is the way I see it. It's not about hiding mistakes. It's Correcting everything as you work with it. Working with a natural material, nothing is perfect. Like this one's got a good bow to it. Okay. Let's do it like this on this one. I like that. 
sun layout right there. Let's get this one toenailed in place. Go around and do this to all of them now. I like it. I like it a lot. That ain't going anywhere. So the next step is to get our strapping up. We have regular one by four strapping and we have one by 10 for right up against the main structure. I left the two by sixes down below the top of the two by eight so we can accommodate for these, for the strapping. And then we can make our fly raptor for over here. But what I want to do first is I'm going to straighten up all of our raptor ends and get those all straightened out and cut back. And then that way when we go to put on our last piece of strap in, then we can just flush it off with the front of the posts. All right, I'm going to take my square, put it up against the 4x4 post, and I'm going to trace it. All right, I'm gonna go through, finish marking the last one, two, three, four, five, six more, and then I'll be right back. doing one without cutting it with a circular saw first. Yeah, both the same. My least favorite tool to use is a sawzall. It just shakes your hands and makes everything itchy. Like right here is itchy now and I don't like the noise. What's your least favorite tool to use? Leave it in the comments down below. Grab our other nail gun, which is our siding nail gun. We'll use 
the ring shank nails that are in a coil. And the reason why I like using these is the gun holds more. If you use it in the stick nail gun, you're changing the nails more often. All right, let's find our other strap in. So we got these two. I'm assuming these are for our fly rafters. That's gonna be for our fly rafter. Fly rafter. And then we have 104, 14, 40. 104, 14, 40. 104, 14, 40. 104, 14. So my guess is this whole pile is what we're gonna be using. All right, let's get our three pieces up that we first need. Launch up one row of strapping for now. One, two, there. Let's grab this piece of strapping and start on the bottom. That'd be smart. A lot easier on us and safer. Grab my level. Oh, here we go. Let it flush. There, there. Let's make sure we fall on layout. Let's do this. That one, we're good there. Put our shorty in the middle on this first one. That'll set. Our last piece. The oh, first piece where it needs to be. Alright, now I need two 16 inch long pieces. I'm gonna cut them. That'll be our spacing from now on. Ah, it was a knot right there. Bummer. All right, we'll use that somewhere else. It's a 1400. That's the longer ones, I do believe. Yeah, 1400. All right, so we want 20 inches on center. We got 16 inch spacers.
All right, now we have some strapping to stand on. Take the long one now. Get that up. There. All right here. Let's run this one up. Get that one set. Let's work smarter. that one. We need this one now. There. The meat birds are doing really good. I need to clean out the chick brooder right now. I'm raising them without using any electricity. It's warm enough out that they don't need the heat source. I have the chick brooder lined with a tarp. It makes the cleanup a lot easier. I'll put a link to the chick brooder and how we made it right here. It's a super simple chick brooder, and the best part is it's folds up into four little pieces and it's easy to store. I'll give them their water with some apple cider vinegar in it. And they are good. Here come the pigs, they see us. What are you doing there, pork? You want some schlop? I got some schlop. Oh, I see old CWC made her way over here. Ready? Get it all up in that tree. Maybe you guys will knock it over and eat it. Mmm, they're really loving that.
that was a fail. What do you think? You can just get the grain from this side? No. There you go. How many eggs you thinking? Twenty. Twenty. I wonder if we got a broody hen sitting in here again. Yep. yep. Missy Moose is gonna be mad at you. Two, four, six, Ooh. seven, nine. How many is she sitting on? How many you got? Probably Come on. a lot. Come on. Go. Um, wait. 11. 11. 13. 15. 15. And one broody chicken. Is there a little cucumbers coming? Uh, I saw a zucchini, I think. I don't know if there's one. You got flowers. Look at all the cucumber flowers. Some more there. Over here. I saw a couple back there. Look at all the tomatoes. And then the camera battery died. There is a lot of green tomatoes out there on those tomato plants. Oh, I can't wait till they start ripening up and we get to have the first tomato off of our tomato plants. We put the tomatoes in the greenhouse this year because last year with all the rain we kept getting we'd get like two to three inches of rain in like an hour. We had a good amount of tomatoes, but they didn't have a lot of flavor for in them. So I'm thinking they were too waterlogged, because when they would really get royally ripe, they would just split and crack, and we wouldn't have time to pick them before they cracked. So, so far this has been working. I guess we'll find out in a few more weeks. It's nice to have the eave overhang where the barn stalls are going to be, all the rafters all up, strapped, especially after yesterday. Yesterday we had to redo a bunch of work. Today, it was nice that everything went nice and smooth. If you didn't see yesterday's video, I'll have a link to that right here in the, and in the description down below. But it's nice to see it all coming together. Thanks for coming along on this journey with us as we're building our barn. You guys are a true blessing to us in our homestead, and we'll see you right back here in the next video at Lumna Acres, a guide to modern homesteading, self-sufficiency, and freedom.